Hello, this is Tim here. I hope you're keeping well. This is um, the video for lesson number five, SolarWorks lesson number five. Um, today, what are we going to work on today? Um, what's going on here? Reading on tight documents. Let's get rid of that for a sec. Um, we're going to work on four problems. We're going to work on this. Um, there are all these Dr. Wall problems that you've seen me use before. They're a little bit more um, complicated and a little bit trickier. Um, my plan is to go through this problem here. Excuse me for a sec. <coughs> this problem here, this one here, and that one there. Four of them. And they're all pretty hairy. Um, and uh, even for myself, I'd have to think about them, how to actually tackle them. So you're going to do four problems, and then you're going to have the usual homework. Uh, now, in the homework, I've given you three problems, and they're, they're, they're tricky enough. Um, so this is really the last lesson that we're going to spend on problems, on parts I mean, and then we're going to move on to drawings next week. So um, we'll just start. Um, we'll start with a spray head. Um, I would tackle this. I was looking at this for a few minutes and I was thinking maybe I could do an extrusion here, a cylinder extrusion, and then another cylinder extrusion, and then maybe some chamfers on here. But really, this is all, it's really symmetrical along the center line here. So this is something that we could revolve. It's just screaming out there to be revolved. So we could revolve this entire object with just one feature. And then we could put in these holes that are on the, uh, the, the angled plane. So the first feature is going to be a revolve. And we're going to draw half of this spray head out. We'll revolve at 360 degrees. We're going to make one drill. We're going to drill one hole. That's going to be the second feature, and then we're going to array that hole around the the cylinder, like so. So it, we can actually do this with uh, three features. We can get away with this this problem. So um, let's let's one other thing. Um, so in order to in order to um, revolve this, we need to know the height from that line to the very very top. Now it would have been nice if they included that, but I'll tell you how you get it. We have this this distance here, and we have that distance there, but we need to know the distance from that line to that line, okay? And it's not shown. But we do know that this is a 45 degree line, okay? So let me just zoom in here for our 45 degree angle. That means the distance from there to there is the same as the distance from there to there. Okay, it's a 45 degree line. So if we can if we can find out what the distance is from there to there, that's good enough. That'll give us this distance. So we do know that the outside diameter is 2.25. The inside circle, this one here, is 1.5. So the distance between them is 0.75. What does that mean? So it, what it means is it means this distance from that circle to there is 0.375 what's going on here let me just get rid of that 0.375 from there to there that means that that distance is 0.375 and then it means that that distance is 0.375 you add 0.375 to 0.575 and then to 2.050 now I use a calculator for that it equals 3 so the distance from that line to the top is three inches there you go all right so let's give it a blast now remember with every problem that I give you we're going to measure the mass properties okay so I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit so three inches and what does it look like it looks something like come over down but let me see if I can remember what this thing looks like so it comes something like this oh, I, 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 it's it's nine o'clock in the morning that I'm doing this you think I'd be better? Okay. Uh, okay, that's that looks about right. Okay. So this sketch is three inches, and then let's have a look. We have two point oh five oh. So let's just do that one at a time. Two point oh five oh, and then we know that the distance from there. Two there is 0.375 and then we have this line 
0.575 it doesn't like that it's over defined I have the three I have everything I need um, okay now what else do we need I have this distance here this circle oh, don't tell me they're missing that dimension so this is one okay I think I can get this this is one inch from there to there now how do we get from here to here that's 1.5 yeah this is this dimension is missing so we'll make this this from that line to there we'll make it 1.5 as well yeah you can see that line there that there's that dotted line so it's a little bit less 1.5 we'll make it 1.4 sorry about the confusion so from that line to there 1.4 okay so that means that this is 0 0.7 1.4 1.4 0.7 yeah that's about right and then this distance here the 2.25 so from here to here is 2.25 what I'm going to do is this is probably confusing you you guys I'm going to get myself a center line and let's put that in and then let's have some center line dimensions that make more sense so from here to there one point f uh, don't be like that let's try that again 1.4 and what was this one do you remember 2.25 and there it is okay and we know that that's 45 degrees so let's just put a dimension in from there to there is 45 so the only dimension that's missing is this is this 1.4 he's just it's just it's just unfortunately he, the, the, this chap here whoever he is he just missed it and we just we'll use a common sense and we make one up you should be able to figure out this 0.375 but I'm after telling you so it doesn't really matter now um, that's it that's the first sketch um, nothing nothing too bad there nothing too tricky let's exit that we'll go to features revolve boss base and it picks up the center line and it's going to revolve it now before before we do that yeah we may as well let's let's before we do that let's edit the sketch and put it looks like there's a, a nice little cutaway here so it comes up one inch point one one point nine two five and then there's that curve so let's have a look so watch this I'm going to show you this trick that I a nice little trick that I've learned so I'm drawing a line uh, coincident to that line it really doesn't matter where I'm going to add a dimension in now in a second I come up straight away this dimension I'm going to add in a bit I walk away from the point and then I come back and I hover over for a second and look what it does it turns it into a, a nice arc um, the only issue with this is I'd like to, I need to make this tangent somehow with that straight line now so do I need to put in I think I need to put in, if I put in a straight line like that, a horizontal line, I can make this line tangent to that. There you go. Now we're in business. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to fix that again, I think. Okay, um, now what was it? It was 1.925. So let's get that. So from here to there 1.925 let's drag this get this dimension out of the way and make it a bit neater and then what was it the distance from there to the around the center line is a diameter of one now this isn't going to work um, yeah let's think about this for a second this radius here is a half an inch Ah, lovely that's better a half an inch okay good so what can I do I'm going to I'll leave all this here and let's see if I can 
revolve this. I'll edit, exit the sketch. I go to features, revolve, click a line, and I'll go right, select the contours. Turn off this thin feature. You've heard me say that enough. I'm highlighting this region is what I want. And it revolves at 360. Okay, so that's that. Let's take let's take a section of it. Here we go. So the next step is creating a, is drilling a hole on that face all the way through to there. Now this is going to be. Let's see how this goes. Okay. So I need I need a plane that's normal to that face. Now let's have a look. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. And that's this this is not going to work. None of them are going to work. Okay. Let me see if I can explain this. I'm going. To, I need a. Re I need a plane anyway. So let's go to reference geometry. And I don't. Uh, this first, second, third reference. Um, I remember how to put in. Pl I. I. It's just from experience, really, how I do it. So let's let's play with this and see if I can get it to work. I'm going to click on this face. And it puts a plane on there straight away that's tangent. We probably could use that. But if we give it a second reference, either that, let's say I'll give it that. What it will do is it, is it puts that, that new plane perpendicular to the top plane, but also, also, is that right, perpendicular? Yeah, but also normal to that plane. Okay, so... You can do it a couple of different ways. Look, I'll show you again. Reference geometry, plane. I can I can pick the first reference I can pick to be the top. The second reference could be this, and it gives me the same result. I'll show you another way. Reference geometry, plane. I don't even need to pick this top. I could pick that's not gonna work. That front that front plane is not gonna work, but I, you'll see what I mean. And then the second reference will be this. That's not going to work. Plane cannot be perpendicular to axis of cylinder cone. Current combination of references and constraints not valid. No luck there. Let's try it again. The, the front is not going to work for us. The top will work and the right will work. So I'll just pick the right. And then the second reference will be this. And then it puts it, puts it perpendicular to that plane. And also lying up against the, the inline or the angular plane so either way it works so in order to get a working plane or a reference plane we need to give that two references you're gonna to have to play around with that but um, I'm sure you're gonna get that to work now let's have a look let's create a sketch on this plane now if you look at the dimensions Dr. Walt has not given us the position of that hole so I'm gonna tell you it looks like it's centered on that face now what does that mean he does tell us that it's a 0.2 diameter. That's good enough. So let's look normal too at this. And what I want to, first thing I want to do is I'm going to draw a center line from the origin to some, something like that. I have a line now. Now I'm going to draw a circle. Now that circle. Why is it not moving? Because it's mid planes That that has to be too good to be true. But let's 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 put our diameter of 0.2 on it. 0 0.2, and I can move this along the line. I'll get back on that line there. So I'll add a constraint. There we go. It can move along that line. But where along that line? What do I mean by centered? I mean the distance from that point there to that point there I would like that circle to be centered between it. So how do I do that? Can I get a working point? There's a working point. Can I click on this edge here and go convert entities? There we go. Now I'm going to click on this curve that I've just made and I'm going to make it for construction. And I'm going to do the same over here. Convert entities, click on the curve for for construction. 
and that's what that looks like now. All of this work that I'm going to is to ensure that this hole is centered on that face. Now, let's do this. Let's measure this from that point there to that point there, and let's look at it. Okay? The, the distance is 0 0.53 of an inch. So, I'm just going to put a dimension. There's probably an easier way. Yeah, I'm, I'm making this hard. Watch this. Let's just put a line in from that point to that point. Let's make this for construction now. Hopefully you know what I'm trying to do. I make that point mid-plane. On the line. I have had to turn that line back on because it was highlighting this larger construction line. Make that midpoint. There it is, and it goes black. It's it's uh, fully constrained. So come on now, let me get see if I can highlight that line. There we go. Okay. So just a lot of work to center that hole up. Um, there's probably about 10 different ways you could do it. So just do your best and see if you can get that hole lined up. Now let's have a look. I'm going to exit the sketch. I'm going to go to extrude cut. And I'm going to cut that hole. And I'm going to ch instead of this being blind, I'm going to go up to next. And what it does is it just cuts that until it sees air. Now I like that up to next. I don't think I've used that before. So there's a hole there. Let's turn off that plane. How do we turn it off? We hit the spectacles. Let's have a look at what this thing looks like. There it is. Okay, we've got one uh, spray head cut out. Now let's go back to the drawing. And how many of these do we have? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A total of eight. Now, if we want to array this around a circle, we don't want a linear pattern because this is revolved. We're going to want a circular pattern. So there it is. The features to pattern. I can either click on this hole like so and it picks up straight away. Or you can access the feature tree from here by hitting this plus button. So the features to pattern are not the revolve. We want a pattern the cut extrude. Now the angle or the axis of rotation is around that cylinder. That cylinder, excuse me, that cylinder would work. And even this tapered angle will work because they're all, they're all concentric. So I'll just pick this. And it says a total of four, equal spacing. So we'll space those out 90 degrees. But we want eight. And that's it. Eight, 360 divided by eight is 45. And there you go. So that circular pattern is a nice, it's a nice, it's a nice um, tool to have. And that's it. I'm taking the section plane there to see how what does it look like. It looks great. Okay, so the usual stuff. I right click on material. I the material that I want is plain carbon steel. Okay, then we're going to go to evaluate. I'm going to go to mass properties, and the mass of this part is 1.27 pounds. Okay, now if you made this with a lathe and you drill those holes in and we put this part on a scale and it was made out of plain carbon steel, I guarantee you it'll be around a one and a quarter pounds. So that's the number you should be getting. If you're not getting this number here, um or you should, you should be getting it bang on to be quite honest with you. But don't don't pull out too much hair if it's not, you know. So that's part number one. Um what did we learn new there is just the circular pattern and that's really it. Okay? Um, I'll move on to part number two now in a sec. So I'm ready to... Whoops, let me get my microphone here. I'm ready to move on to um, problem number two. Um, this is this is a good and interesting problem. I'll, I'll, I'll get into that now in a second. But let's have a look at it. We have... It looks like a cauldron. It has... This is called... I would call this a flange uh, at the top of it. Um, it has... Uh, ports, two ports on either side and then it has a small port there and then it has another port at the very very bottom or hole or connector port um, so the first thing we want to do is get the shape of the cylinder or get, get the shape of the cauldron so we just have that curve there 
and we know that the walls are 0 0.150 thick, so we'd probably use some sort of an offset and we'll revolve it 360 degrees. Then we'll put on this, this flange at the top. Then we're probably going to draw one of these ports and then we could mirror it over. And it's just, and so on. The one trick in this part is having, we need to create a plane that's away from the object and then extrude towards it. And you'll see what I mean now in a sec. So let's have a look. Um, what dimensions do we need? The 3 inches is a good one. The 2.5. And then some of those curves. So let's give it a, let's give it a blast. What else do we need? Uh, okay, let's give it a blast. Alright, so let's get rid of this one. You're going to save your parts. But, you know, I, I don't really need it, to be honest. I'll create a sketch on the front plane. And I'm going to draw something like this. Right? I go away from the point and I come back to it and now I have a curve. A little bit too much. Okay, something like that. Now, let's put in a center line from the origin. Now, I'm thinking... In this example, where do we want the origin? Probably at the bottom of the cauldron before we put in that, that bottom hole. Um, so let's have a look. I need to remember 3 and I need to remember 2.5. Okay. Okay, good. So from there to there is 3 inches. And this diameter of the pot is 2.5 so let's see if I can just trim this bit of it away there you go and what was this this was I'm thinking it was 0 0.75 0 0.75 2.5 and 3 0 0.75 2.5 and 3 okay and then I also have to make this this line is not um, it's not fully defined let's make a tangent to that there it is, fully defined. Okay, now it's saying that the thickness of the walls are 0 0.150. So let's have a look. Offset entities, 0.150. Alright, that's the wrong direction. So hit reverse. Beautiful. Um, okay, I got that. Um... Am I in the mood to do the flange now? Let's, is there a dimensional? Yes, there is, okay. So let's put this flange in. So what does it do? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry to go back and forth. Three inches to the very, very top. So this flange looks something like this. Comes out and down. And let's just trim this bit of it away. Now, let's remember this dimension, 3.25. So from here to here, 3.25. And what's the thickness of this? Now let's put this 3 inches back. So from here to here, 3 inches. Lovely. Now what's the thickness of this flange going to be? A quarter of an inch. There it is right there. Everything goes black. It's a fully defined sketch. Let's tidy it up a little bit. Why do we tidy sketches up? Because there's a good chance that someone else is going to look at your work. Now let's rotate this, and let, is this a fully, is this a fully enclosed region? It's not really there. There's an opening right here. So let's put a line in. That's it. So exit sketch, features, revolve, selected contours. The axis of revolution. See, there's an example there where it didn't figure it out, so we had to manually put all those in. And there's our cauldron with our flange. Now, let's have a look. Let's get this first um, port on the right-hand side. Okay? So let's look at the front plane. We call that the front plane. And let's look at the top and the right. Okay. I need to draw a 
a port here on the right hand side and I need to extrude it up to the surface. Now what, I need a plane. Now that plane needs to be 1.750, remember that number, 1.750. I draw a circle there and I'll extrude it up to the surface. One and a quarter, one and three quarters. So what, what plane will work? This right plane was, is good for us, okay? You'll see what I mean. The right plane is good. So let's get a, a reference plane and let's give it an offset of 1.75. Look at that. And we go, okay. Is that a little bit far? Yeah, that's about right. 1.75. Okay. So um, let's create a sketch on that plane and go normal to. Let's look at it. And then let's create a circle. Don't worry about, I don't know if you can see that, but sometimes SolidWorks, um, I have a setting on my SolidWorks here to have not the highest resolution in curves. And sometimes it'll approximate stuff like that. Just when you see crap like that, don't even worry about it. Now, the distance, the diameter is one inch. So let's put that in. One inch. And I'll make, let's get a center line, like so. Now we'll, we'll add, we're going to have to add in the, we're going to have, this is going to be a port, but I'm, I'm going to have to add, actually cut it uh, a different feature. So, is there a height difference? Look at this, 1.25 is what we want. So the height, the distance from that line there to there is 1.25. Now, why is this not? lock it in because I haven't locked it into the this center line coincident fully black fully constrained features let's extrude it up to surface now what surface do we want to extrude it to this one right there now let's try something else can I make this up to next that still works too I like that um, up to vertex no that's not gonna work up to next will work No, maybe not. Let's try that again. Extrude this sketch up to next. No, let's flip it up to next. Yeah, there you go. That works too. Either, either way it works, up to next or up to surface. Okay, there it is. Now let's let's create a hole through this, or that part is useless. So let's create a sketch on that face. Hit the space bar put a hole there or a circle and let's look at the diameter it looks like a diameter of and here we go we're missing another dimension yeah this is one inch but it's not telling us the hole going through it we'll make that hole a quarter of an inch Point seven five. perfect and then we, I'll, I'll extrude cut and I'm going to go up to next and it just cuts it right up until it, get, until it reaches air so very nice now watch this I'm going to turn this plane off with the glasses let's have a look at this right plane that's going to be a nice mirror plane so let's click on mirror and what do we want to mirror you can highlight the features here or you can do it over here. I think this is a better method to be honest. You have more control over it. So you want to feature this one, and we want to we want to sorry we want to mirror that one and this one here. Come on, there you go. I see both of them in the features to mirror, and I go okay. Look at that. Lovely. What's next? So let's get the um, the port at the front here. Now that port at the front is only three quarters, and let me have a look. It looks like it's lined up at one one point two five. Okay, so let's do this. How far is it away, though? It it's one point five five. If I drew a straight line here, a center line, it's one point five five away from that. So what do we do? Which plane do we want? That plane, the front plane. We're going to offset from that. Now. That, that penny kind of has to drop in your head I don't know, you have to kind of look at it and, and, and pull out your hair a little bit about why I'm using certain planes to offset um, 
I just I just do a lot of examples and hopefully it, it, it the students get it if that penny drops after a while. 1.55 and I'll create a sketch on that plane. Okay, um, I'm going to get a center line from that midpoint to that to that midpoint, and I'm going to do the same here from the origin to that midpoint up there. Everything is all centered, symmetrical, so it works out for us. And here we go. I lock into that point there, and we make this point seven five. I know I'm moving a bit fast here at the moment. Um, I need some breakfast. All right, uh, let's go to let's flip this, and let's go up to next. And there's that first port. And again, I I turn off the plane. I create a sketch on that face, and I go normal to. I'm going to create a sketch on there, and we'll just make this a half an inch. Or did 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 they give us the the dimension? No. Nope. That's great, a half, a half an inch will do. Use your common sense if you're missing dimensions. So we just extrude cut, up to next. And there it is. Okay, the last port is at the very, very bottom. So what's nice about this is I don't need to do any funky plain work. I'll just create a sketch on that face. No, I'm lying, I do need to do that. Um, Let's have a look. Yeah, he's, he's. We're missing another dimension here. Look at this. Um, point seven five, but we don't know how deep this is. It looks like about a quarter of an inch. It's the same thickness as that. Okay. So let's have a look. I'm going to create a sketch on there. Make this point seven five. Bring it a bit closer. Here we go. I'm going to extrude this point two five, and then all I need is another sketch and another circle. We we'll make that a half an inch. And I just extrude that, extrude, cut that up to surface, up to next. So let's create, let's have a look at a, um, a section view of this. That's it. Um, you can see that Dr. Walt is after um, putting in a lot of fillets there, but we don't really know what they are. I'd rather leave them out um, because I'll give you a number that we'll do the mass properties, but you could very easily. Do you know, if you had, if you were actually building this, this would be made out of, it would be made out of tubular steel, and it would be welded together. So you would actually have wells here. And and if we want to, if we want to make wells in SolidWorks, a very easy way is just using a fillet around. Okay. So look, let's let's do this. We may as well practice it. Let's let's create a fillet, and uh, let me see a good number. Let's make it point one two five. That's an eighth of an inch. And let's do them all. Okay, lovely. An eighth of an inch, and you'd probably see it's the same here. Okay. Very nice. Okay, so let's have a look. If you've if you've used an eighth of an inch fillet on all of those, now why do I have two of them? There we go. Okay, uh, an eighth of an inch fillet on all of those uh, edges that I'm showing you. You should get the same number that I have. So what do we do? We go to material, right click, plain carbon steel, evaluate, mass properties. What do I get? I get 1.34 pounds of weight. So it should be close enough to that. All right, um, what's next? Hello, this is Tim again. Um, I'm going to work on problem number three. So let's give it a, a lash. Um so let's where do we start? Um the first thing that's kind of jumping out at me is we have a, a, a cylinder, a big cylinder with a flange on top of it. The cylinder is one point five diameter by two point eight. 
and then we have a flange on top of it and then we have this angled piece of pipe that's that's um, coming in from an angle um, which shouldn't be too bad so let's start um, we're in inches so I'm just going to new part going and we're in inches and I'm going to create a sketch on the, the top plane so let's have a look again so we're a diameter 1.5 and then the wall thickness is 0.2 so let's put a diameter of 1.5 on this thing I'll get another circle going and I'll just put a wall thickness of 0.2 like so so let's get out of the sketch go to features, extrude boss base and we'll make it, I can't, um, it's late now at the moment, 2.8 2.8, alright there we go so I'll go OK and I'll create another sketch on this on that face right right there and I'll create another circle here and I'll, what dimension do we need to put in? 2.75 is the outer outer diameter and what we want to do is this edge here I want to convert <coughs> excuse me now convert entities now the thickness of this thing the thickness of the flange is 0 0.2 excuse me now 0.2 and I'll flip it. Okay. And looking down at this, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six holes that are spaced sixty degrees, and they're a quarter of an inch. Now, the 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 center there's a circle, a construction circle going on here. It's two point two five. So I'll start with that. Let's create a circle. Diameter diameter is 2.25 and let's turn this make this for construction. Alright, so what I'll do is I'm gonna draw a circle on here and I'm gonna make it a quarter of an inch. Like so. And I'm gonna go instead of going linear sketch pattern, I want a circular sketch pattern. And the entities that I want to pattern are this circle, equal spacing, and we want to we want to make it six. And I'll go OK. Now, why is this not fully defined? Uh, for for whatever reason, when we do uh, a rotate a circular sketch pattern, I can grab that. Can I move it? Here it is. What happens is all the all the circles are a quarter inch, but for some reason they don't lock down this center point. So if I grab that center point and I move it in, it locks into place. Everything goes black, and now I can exit the sketch and go extruded cut. And I'll go up to next. I just want to cut cut those holes out until I see air. All right. So, how many features do I have? I have three features. The cylinder first, the flange second, and the holes third. So let's go back to the drawing, and what else do I need? I need this angular, um, this angular piece of pipe. So, what am I gonna do? There's a couple of, t couple of different ways of doing this. <coughs> Sorry about that. too lazy to start again to be honest all right um, I'm going to create a sketch on this front plane and I could also do it on the right plane and you'll see what I'm going to do now in a sec I'm going to draw a center line or a construction line up whatever and I'm going to come out now what is it how far do I need to come up I need to come up a half an inch and then I need a 60 degree line 
So I'll come up a half an inch, 0.5, and I need a 60 degree line here, like so. Okay. And then how far do I need to come out? I need to come out 1.5. So instead of it instead of it being a horizontal dimension, I'm using an angular or an is it aligned dimension is what I'm doing there. So let's have a look for a second. Let's make make sure it doesn't tell me. So this is called an aligned dimension. So I don't want a horizontal. I want an aligned, and I have my kind of construction sketch. So I'm going to exit out of that, and you like this. I'm going to go plane. Reference plane, reference geometry, reference plane. I click on the line, and then I'm going to click on the point. And what does it do? It's taking two references. The first references, first reference was the line. The second reference was the point, and it puts it in, like so. So this plane is is touching the end point, and it's it's what is it? It's perpendicular to the line. Now I'm going to delete that and do it again for you. I can't do that sketch without, I'm sorry, I can't do that plan without that sketch. So I put the sketch in first. Uh, this is kind of like a construction sketch. And then I go plan, I click the line, and then I click the point, and I go OK. Now, I'll create a sketch on that plan, like so, and I have this origin. And I'm going to look at this normal too. And I'm going to draw a, a circle, like so. Now the diameter of this thing is one inch. Now why isn't it why isn't it being locked into place? Because I need to lock it into the origin. Come on now, don't be an arse. Here we go. Still not locked in. So let's click the origin. Click that and we'll go coincident and now it goes black, it's fully defined. Okay, one inch is what it was, and we'll extrude it up to the surface or extrude to next. So I get out of here, I go extrude, I flip this, get it going in the right direction, and I go up to next. And that's it. It'll just keep going extruding until it reaches the, the surface. So I can you do stuff like construction sketches like so. I'll turn it off, I'm done with it and I'll turn the plane off. Now what's next? I'm going to create a sketch on here. Go normal to, and I'm going to create a circle. I'm floating over the edge to say wake up center point, and then I have my my circle. This wasn't put in the, in the drawing. I'm going to make this 0.75, and then I'm going to cut that through. And I'm going to go up to next. So, there we go. Let's take, let's look at a, a section view of this thing. And there it is. Now, uh, you can see on the drawing, uh, there's a couple of fillets here, small fillets that I, I'm pretty sure are not on there. Um, let's do this before I start putting the fillets in. Let's. Let's apply a material and we make a plain carbon steel as much what we've been using. And I'm gonna go evaluate and I'm gonna go mass properties. Now as of now, this mass is 0.9 pounds. So if we start adding some fillets, it's gonna definitely change it. So let's add a couple of fillets for just for practice. Now the first fillet, I'm gonna try this 30 thousandths. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna apply a 30 thousandths fillet to each of those ho small holes. That's the first one, 30 thousandths, 0 0.03. The next thing I'll do is I'm going to have a fillet of 0.125, an eighth of an inch. Put one there. I see I'm after picking the whole face. Let's try that again. There's one, and there's two. Okay, so two little fillets. So the first one was a 30, uh, 30, 000, 30 thousandths fillets on each of those six holes, and then the second one was an eighth fillet on that edge and that edge. Now let's see what it changes. So we go back to 
mass properties and what is it now it's 0.91 pounds so you should be pretty close to that that's problem number um, three on the handout and problem number four we let's move on to this one here now let's just go back here for one second and what did I want to say about this well, there's the section of it anyway. Um, the really the only tricky thing was um, creating this sketch and creating that plane. Everything else you should have seen before, but um, kind of what I'm trying to show you t uh, today and tonight is uh, is how to create those kind of construction planes. All right, I'm going to get out of here and don't save it. I don't really care. Hopefully, you're going to save your work. The next thing we want to do is um, this molded boot. Now, where do we begin with this? I, I'm looking at this first, and I have two features. I think I'm going to show you how to do a thing called... Uh, what is it called? What do I want to know, teach you how to do? Let's get a new part open first, and I'll see if I can remember what I actually want to teach you. Something called a shell. So, the first thing we'll do is... There's two things going on here. We have we're going to learn about drafting and we're going to learn about shelling. So the first thing is we need we need the the origin is going to be right bang in that center. Okay? So let's create a sketch on the top plane and it's going to be a center rectangle. And this will make sense now in a sec. It's four inches by three inches, and we have the three quarter inch radius. So let's see if I can remember that. Four inches. By three inches. Goes black, let's get our radius going. 0 0.75. There's one. There's two. There's three, there's four, and let's go back and have a look. So that's the outer dimension, and what it has is it has a five degree draft with a one inch extrusion. Okay, let's give that a try. So let's get out of here, and let's look at it from a nice isometric, nice isometric angle, and we'll go extrude. Flip it, and we want a one inch extrude, but we want a draft of five degrees. Now that looks pretty good. Now we don't we don't want it in this direction, we want to be going inwards. So there's one, just a solid draft. Don't worry about the wall thickness for the time being. We'll do that now in a sec. So the next thing we want to do is I'm going to create a sketch on this face right here. And I'm going to draw a circle. And the circle is yeah, I get it now. 1.5 diameter. So that I can't do that. I need to I'll get out of here for a sec. I need to actually because I have this this dimension 1.5. Stop being a pain. There you go. I need to create um, a plane that's one inch away and then extrude up to the the face. So let's get out of here for a sec and let's cr go to plane and let's go one inch away an offset plane an offset distance of one inch and let's create a sketch on that plane now because I've been wise with my right and front planes and I've done this all in the center I have my origin right bang in the middle of that part so let's create let's look at this normal too and let's create a circle now the diameter is 1.5 Like so. And I'm gonna what am I gonna do? I'm gonna extrude this, flip it, and go up to up to next. And it will just ex keep on extruding until it sees that that face. Now am I done with this or do I need to put in a draft? So let's click the draft and let's let's give it um a five degree draft. And we'll instead of that we'll go outwards. Now what does this mean? It means that it means if I drew an imaginary straight line up there that this is five degrees 
and what it is it's on all sides and I'll go okay so there's that five degree draft now did he include the radius is that this works okay let's do this so there's a radius of 0.2 right there so we'll have to do that separately so let's get a radius what the hell am I saying fill it fill it of 0.2 but they're both the same thing radius of 0.2 so there's one and then the next thing is a radius of 0.25 so I have the tangent propagation let's put this 0.25 and let's click any of these edges it doesn't really matter it'll just it'll just it'll zoom all the way around now there's that now what's the last thing I need to do I need something called a shell now what does a shell do it removes material from a solid body to create a thinned wall feature it'll make more sense when I do it so I'm going to click shell and we know that the shell thick wall thickness is 50 thousandths so let's see what happens so I'm going to put in 0 0.05 and I'm going to go OK and it does its shell now so what says you so I'm going to I'm going to click on a section view and show you what act what's actually going on so what it does is it just creates a wall thickness of 50 thousandths everywhere and it hollows everything out but that's not really what we want we want an opening at the top and an opening at the bottom so let me show you how to do that so let's go back and edit this shell now first of all let's turn off this section and edit the shell and what's this this is faces to remove if I click one face and I go OK it shells everything but it's still it's kind of a nice nice kind of drinking utensil there at the moment but that's not really what we want I also want to open up that face so I right click edit and I click this one and I can turn on show preview and I, well it doesn't really tell me much but this is what we want the shell is a very very useful um, feature but you kind of have to practice with it a little bit but that's the first thing you would use a shell for that that molded boot okay um, I don't know why it's going blue there, but it's kind of been a pain. Um, anyway, that's it. Um, what are the new features that we kind of went over there? Um, the, mer the, the, the tapered. You're going to see that in the SOLIDWORKS certification exam, so kind of get you want to have a little bit of practice with it. Um, and then the last thing was the actual shell. So that's part number four. Um, can we have a look at your homework for next week as well? So SOLIDWORKS Lesson 5 Homework. So what is it? I have, I have three problems for you. The first one is um, a castle or a chess piece. It's called a rook or a castle. And the first feature of this is going to be the revolve. So I'm pretty sure all the, I'm, I'm very sure all the dimensions are here. So you're, this is going to be the first feature. You're going to revolve this 360 degrees. The second thing is this top view, and you're going to create these cutouts, like so. You're going to use the convert to entities. And the last thing is just a simple polygon that is a 50 degree taper angle. So you're going to draw this polygon in, and then you're going to have your 15 degrees extrusion. Okay? So you're going to practice that tapered extrusion a little bit. The next thing is um, a fairly complicated it's not that complicated of a part but there's quite a lot of features um, do your best with this uh, all the dimensions are there you're just gonna have to figure this out you're gonna have some holes there with some chamfers um, this is called ordinate dimensioning so the distance from there to that line is 0.21 the distance from there to that line there is point. 9.79 the distance from there to there is 0.79 minus 0.21 so you're going to have to do some arithmetic um, you're just going to have to look at the different views and figure out the dimensions of things um, if you're having major problems with this email me and I will create another video and then we have this problem number 3 which is just kind of a beast of a thing um, I'm just throwing that out there to see what you can do. I'm pretty sure all the dimensions are there. You should be able to figure it out. Um, 
you know sometimes in in in, in industry um things are they're going to be complicated and you kind of have to think up on your feet instead of me holding your hand so good luck with that and uh just email me if you're having major trouble but i'd like you to spend at least an hour on each problem trying to figure them out before you do okay good luck and i'll see you next week